Let's take a look at some of the basics of graph theory. If this is your first time with graph theory, this new mathematical field, you might have some ideas about graphs. And I want to make sure that we're all on the same page here. So previously, um, you might have thought of a graph as something that looks like vertices. You've got an x-axis and a y-axis, and you've got some sort of a function that's graphed on that on the coordinate plane, and that's something that you might have called a graph in the past. And that's not the type of graph that we're dealing with here. So that is absolutely a graph, but that's not what we're talking about. Another idea that you might have about graphs could be uh, bar graphs. That's something that we see a lot um, when we're talking about different types of data. We can compare things using bar graphs. And also, bar graphs are not what we're talking about with uh, graph theory. And there are all sorts of other graphs. You've got pie charts that, uh, well, that's a terrible pie chart, but um, you get the idea. These are all things that you might have images of in your head when I say graph, and that's not what we're going to be dealing with here. So wipe all of that away, and we're going to start over fresh with this whole new idea of a mathematical graph. And you've got a definition of a graph in your textbook, so I'm not going to not going to repeat the definition or write the definition down. I'm just going to go through what a graph is. So what a graph is is a collection of these dots. So I'll draw some dots here. And what these dots are called are vertices. So I have a group of these dots. They're called vertices. If I just have one dot by itself, it's called a vertex. All right, you will drive your math teacher nuts if you call one of these a vertice. So make sure that if you're talking about just one of the dots, you're talking about a vertex. And if you're talking about all of the dots, you're talking about vertices. And I'm going to just give these names. I'll call them A, B, C, and D so that I can keep track of what I'm doing here. Um, and then the other thing that we have in a graph are edges, edges that connect the vertices. And so I could draw a straight line between A and B, and that would be an edge. I could draw a curved line between A and D, that would be an edge. I could draw a line from C all the way back to itself, that is also an edge. So basically what a graph is, is going to be a collection of vertices, and then the edges that may or may not go between those vertices. And so we can draw a whole bunch of these. And this right here is a graph. So let's label this a little bit here. The dot there, that's a vertex. Uh, this right here, that is an edge. And this edge here is actually kind of a special edge. It's one of these things in graph theory where if you stick with me long enough, you're going to find out there are some special names for a lot of things. Uh, the good thing about graph theory is all of these names make a whole lot of sense. So when you've got an edge that goes from a vertex right back to itself, we just call that a loop. All right, so no big deal there. And then I want to make sure that we talk about something that tends to confuse people with graph theory when they're doing it just for the first time. They have a good idea about what these vertices and edges are, and then somebody does something like draw an edge between A and C. And so we've got something happening in this area right here, right? It sure looks like those lines are crossing each other. And a big mistake that people make is assuming that this space right here is a vertex. And this is not a vertex. You might even want to think about one of those lines as going over the top of the other line. Because if they don't actually have a dot drawn on there, that's not a place where those, those two lines actually intersect. So these two lines, the line between A and C, and the line between B and D, they don't touch each other at all. So that's not a vertex. And that might be something that you see on a test or a quiz at some point. Somebody might ask you whether or not there's a vertex in this place, and there just absolutely isn't. Okay, so let's see what other basic ideas we can talk about about graphs. I'm going to scroll down a little bit here. And uh, we'll talk about um, equivalent graphs. So equivalent graphs are two graphs that are technically the same. Equivalent graphs. I think I can spell today. All right. So if I have a set of vertices, my A, B, um, C, and D, 
and I connect them. Let's see, I'm going to do an edge here, an edge here, and an edge here. That graph is actually the same as if I just did this. All right, so I'm going to call this D, A, B, and C, and I'm going to connect from here to here to here. All right, all I did basically was flap all the flaps out and call it the same thing. So two graphs are equivalent when they've got the same number of vertices and the same edges between those specific vertices. So here I've got an edge between A and D. Here I've got an edge between A and D. Here I've got an edge between A and B. I've got an edge between A and B. Here I've got an edge between B and C. Here I've got an edge between B and C. So, same number of vertices, same number of edges, and the edges go between the same vertices. So it can be a little weird sometimes because graphs that don't necessarily look alike really are the same thing. So here's one to show you the point of equivalent graphs. So here's an A, B, C, D. And then I'm going to draw this. A, B, C, and D. So here's A, B, C, and D. So I'm going to draw an edge here, 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 and an edge here. Now remember, in the middle there, there's no vertex. The only vertices we have are A, B, C, and D. All right, so I have an edge between A and B. So I'm going to draw one between A and B. Well, it looks like I've also got one between A and C, so I'm going to draw an edge between A and C. I have an edge between A and D, so I'll draw an edge between A and D. Um, and I'm going to stop circling those because it's going to get pretty crowded there in a second. So I'm going to move on to B. I've got an edge between B and A. I've already drawn that. I've got an edge between B and C, so I'll draw that one. Oops, get the right color here. And now I need an edge between B and D, so I'll draw that. And now we'll move on to vertex C. C and B I've already got. C and A I've already got. So I need C and D. And I'm edge between C and D. And now by the time I make it to D, I've got all of the edges that I need. So these two graphs are actually, they're equivalent. I can't write it in here. Can I? Can I? Yep. Yep. So. These are equivalent graphs because they have the same number of vertices, they have the same number of edges, and those vertices are connected by the same edges. So these look like very different graphs. They do not look like the same thing, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how you draw the graph. What matters is that you have the, the right number of edges, the right number of vertices, and that they're connected in the right way. So a really common type of homework problem that you're going to see is going to be asking you whether or not two graphs are equivalent. And the first thing that you can do is make sure that they have the same number of vertices. Um, that's, that's really easy. If they've got a different number of vertices, they're not equivalent. And then you want to check to make sure that the edges connecting those vertices match up. And so I'll do a few examples of that when I do homework problems. But that's something to think about. So this is uh, your first video in graph theory basics. I'm going to do another video that's going to talk a little bit about some more terminology. We'll talk about circuits and paths, and we'll talk about degree of vertices and uh, get some more vocabulary down so that all the rest of this graph theory stuff starts making sense.